Good evening, boys and girls, no matter where in the world you might be. Welcome to the Highbury Squad. It's a new week, which means we get to start with a blank canvas and tell brand new stories. But is it? Is it? Let's go. Mind the gap between the train and the platform. Please stand clear of the discussion doors. The next stop is Highbury Squad. Good evening, boys and girls. Please stand clear of the discussion doors. That's right. There's lots to talk about today. The squad is back and here we are in all of our glory, although it wasn't a glorious weekend for neither the men's or the women's team. But here is my podcast brother from another mother, Mr. Super Kev. Squaddies at ease. Let's get stuck in. Let's not mess around. Let's it's not time. mess around. Let's not mess around. Good evening to all the usual suspects in the house and welcome to anyone listening on replay or across our other platforms like Spotify and iTunes. You will find that we're updating our set, our, our stuff. So many of you have been writing saying, why aren't you guys posting to iTunes or Spotify anymore? Well, we are rectifying that for you, just for you. Kev, I may have shown you this before, but over the weekend, I watched a documentary on the rise and fall of Von Dutch, and I found this. <laughs> well, you've had, you've had a bit of Von Dutch before, haven't you? You've... <laughs> yes, yeah. It's red and white, you know, so I thought I'd whip it out. I'd whip it out. Hello, everybody. Taib, you might be surprised. An argument? Us? No, come on. I'm feeling Monday madness, fuming more like, says Uta B. Let's get some of your comments up early. Uh, Colin says, shows the squad's not good enough without Europe. You can win both cups and still only play 51 games with league in total. But we rest players and replacements not good enough in a tricky away tie. Ryan says, I wonder what excuse Kev will have now. No excuses from Super Kev, none at all. Excuse more. Ryan, hold on a minute, Ryan. <laughs> An excuse. What excuse what excuse could I possibly even attempt for what we witnessed yesterday? Are you crazy? See, I told you you guys might be surprised. Let's start, Kev, and I will continue to put the comments See, on up. They've not, riled, they're, they're not happy either. They're not. They're not. Not at all. Not at all. Garbage. Okay. The same bloody garbage. Vespa, we get it. We get it, Vessi. Calm down, kid. Calm down. Calm down. All right. Um, if you are trying to um, listen to the show on Facebook, there's a little bit of a technical glitch right now, but don't worry. Um, you can go to Twitter or YouTube, of course, uh, and listen to the show. Right, Kev, top five talking points. The first one, we're going to revert back to uh, the comment about rotation, not having Europe, playing less games. We had seven days in between our game, between um, when we played City. They only had two days rest. It is a damn shame that without having Europe, yes, we're in uh, in the top four right now in the Premier League. We don't know if we're going to be there at the end of the season. The FA Cup is a trophy we all love. You've won it. Kev, talk me through the resting versus going for it. Did we disrespect Nottingham Forest, your old club? No, I don't think we did disrespect them. I think what we have to take into consideration as well, what you didn't mention, Sophie, and thank you very much, Newman, was <laughs> the semi-final. The semi-final's coming up. And whether we like it or not, and you know you take one game at a time, maybe we had a little eye for some of the younger players on a semi. And it's no excuse, Sophie, but you could understand because the semi-finals are going to be thick and fast. You've got Spurs coming up and then the other semi-final. So you've got two legs. Maybe we took our eye off the ball a little bit, but the performance and the players were not good enough, Sophie. It's that simple. There's no excuse. You're playing Nottingham Forest, a championship team. We're doing okay, but 
Mm -mm. We were awful and got what we deserved, so so we could talk. We 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 still played some of our some of our better players, Sophie, and they didn't perform. So let's have it right. We were just awful on the day. Awful. Kev, one of the things that you've talked about a lot on this show is the midfield. And my goodness, did it come to haunt us in this particular game. In that first half, it was non-existent. And I'll get to the Nuno thing in a second, Kev. It felt like we we had no control. We couldn't pass it through the middle. And we were relying on the flanks a lot, which is why I think Nuno got a little overrun. He's a young player. And I want you as an ex-player to tell me how that must have felt being 21, new, a man that brought you into the club, subs you 10 minutes before halftime. But let's talk about the midfield first, Super Kev. This is going to be a problem. Some people have been on this show and said January is going to make or break our season. Talk to me, Kev, about the midfield. Sophie, we've been, we've been really worried about the midfield all season. And we spoke about the Africa Cup of Nations coming up and we have to do our business quick. Mm -hmm. The fact of the matter is a lot of people have spoken about Ainsley Maitland-Niles. Why did we let him go? But th that was the window. That's where they wanted him. Because if he plays and he gets injured, that doesn't happen. So the deal had to be done. We've taken a risk, Sophie. We've taken a risk on this Nottingham Forest game to play Patino and uh, what's his name? Um, uh, Lekonga, Sambi. Sambi. Sambi, right? We've taken a risk, but we've, we've got more than enough there, so <laughs> We've got more than enough in the team. We should be performing a lot better than that. But the fact of the matter is, Sophie, we need to get business done sharp because you know what, Sophie? If Nottingham Forest are going to do that to us, Oh, when yeah. we come, when we come up against better teams, and we're weak in midfield, do you, do you remember? I also we we discussed Sophie. We discussed about Thomas Partey. And people say Thomas Partey ain't doing this. He hasn't done that. Da, da, da. I said, you we're gonna watch when he's not there. Yeah. You, you may not see the little things he does, but you know what? The presence and the understanding is so much higher than when we ever imagined. But here we are, Sophie. Him and El Nenny's not there. No Xhaka. We go with two youngsters against an experienced midfield. And we, we get back. We, we got battered in midfield. We did. We did. And um, where is it? There's a comment that someone just, I had, I just put up that said, we've got a, and a, a starting eleven that could make top four, but a championship cast. tile type supporting squad. Cast. Yeah, supporting cast ain't good enough. But we've known that, Sophie. There it is, we, Amira. Yeah, Sophie, we we have known that. And do you know what this has got to do, Sophie? If I'm really honest with you, this has to speed up the recruitment. Has to. Because mm -hmm. there's going to be injuries in the league. And we need to be able to replace player like for like. Kev, you know how I've said to you before about adaptability, right? So, you know, we praise Arteta when he takes a risk and he's taken calculated risks, but he's also taken stupid risks. For example, playing Xhaka at left back in a European semi-final, right? But sometimes... When you have injuries and when you have, you know, a, a, a competition, a very important competition for a lot of our boys playing for their country in the Africa Cup of Nations, you you lose key players. It's mm -hmm. happening to look, Liverpool have lost Salah and Mane. I know someone mentioned that Ghana just lost one more loss and, you know, Partey will be coming home. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we want him to have a good tournament and we want him to come back, you know, completely healthy. But previously I've said... Even I love Ben White, right? But you see the difference in the partnership. So when we create these partnerships, when you lose one, the partnership loses something, right? Hundred percent. I 
And in with this midfield situation, and, and we talk about Maitland Niles going to Roma now. Should we have waited until this cup game, the semi-finals against Liverpool, the January transfer window does not end until the 31st? Unless, of course, we don't know something and someone's coming in. We don't know. Sophie, someone has to be coming in. Has to. Because it, it, makes, it makes no sense to leave yourself so short. Mm-hmm. Obviously, you always would love to get it on the right time where one goes out the door and then the next one comes in. So, mm -hmm. But the issue is it hasn't quite worked out that way. Now, someone just put up their, they, felt, they felt sorry for Charlie Patino. I do too. I've, we've discussed it on here that these young, talented players should be coming in to a, a, an experienced, more experienced team. We're, we're having to play him in a big cup tie. And I know he's a talented kid, but let's be honest, Sophie. He's not played. He's played a little smidge of first-team football. Is that so, setting him up to fail, Kev? Well, it's not quite setting him up to fail. It's just not the, the wisest. It's just not the wisest thing for, for Charlie Patino. Let's, you know, let's get... Do you remember I said let's get him out on loan, Sophie? Let's get, yes. him out on, let's get him out on loan so he learns of how to handle himself. He's, he, fair enough, he trains with the team and all that. And do you know what? When you train with the team, you think you're ready. Yeah, that's And a then great you point. go in and then all of a sudden, then you realize how real it is. Because in training, you'll get the free kick here and there. But in this game, people are smashing. This is a championship team. They've got no respect for anybody. Yeah, and when he came into that um, that game where he scored, look who was on the pitch. That was virtually their first 11. So, he, yeah. so him to come on, and, you know, it, it, the game was already over. So it's, 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 it's against Sunderland and all that kind of thing. But this was a hot, red, hot-blooded Cup tie, FA Cup tie, and we we couldn't we couldn't raise a gallop. So no, we, we got we scored couldn't. in midfield, and um, that that kid Spence, my goodness, what a player he looks like! He absolutely bossed it. Yeah, um, but, on his side, but we couldn't get Sophie. We couldn't get. It looked like we were leggy. It looked like we didn't have no zip in us. Why, Kev? We haven't. We've not. No, but played. we don't. Sophie, I, I I I've been a pro. There's no science to it, Soph, because you do the same things, you prepare the same way, and sometimes you play, Sophie. There's no oomph in you. But you know what the, be the, the best sides do? <laughs> the best sides grind it out, you win it 1-0, and then what do you say, Sophie? As long as we're in the hat, it don't matter. Yeah, yeah. But we're not, um, good, enough. But we're no. not good enough for that. And this making the draw before the other games are finished... Everyone going on saying we got Leicester at home, we got Leicester at home. It's like stop. This take is the care FA of Cup. Business. Yeah, take care of business. Look what never happened mind, to Newcastle. Never mind thinking ahead. Never mind thinking ahead, Solf. You've got to take care of business. And we couldn't do it. We were we were crap. Let's have it right. We you were, really were. We were awful from start to finish. Other than Leno, I thought Leno had a good game, had some good saves, Kev. You know, well, I, I, I'm not going to judge Patino on that because he needs help. Yeah, no, Leno, I thought done all right, but the others, come on. I mean, there's Saka. You got you got Saka, Erdegaard, Martinelli on there. Yeah, Martinelli was so wasteful. Saka but, wasn't even in the game. Yeah, we were, and and do you know what, so do you know when you know something's not right? Do you know when a five yard pass goes astray? So many times. Just a simple pass from here to there. We couldn't get it right. There was no there was no chemistry. There was no cohesiveness. It, it looked like they had played together for the first time. Yeah, it looked like strangers. Yeah. Yeah. And, and and it shouldn't be that way. No. Now I want to get I want to move on to um talking point number two. Mm -hmm. Keep them coming in, guys. We'll put them up, all 240 of you in live chat on this fine Monday evening. Um, 
Kev, the new no sub. Mm-hmm. Talk me through that as a player and also well, uh, well, a, as, a only, well, as a captain. As a captain. Well, I can only talk it through because that's never happened to me, thank God. But I've seen it happen. And let's be honest, Sophie. He could have done it to anyone. But he did it he, to Nuno. He, he, he could have hooked, maybe because Nuno's on his side as well. Nuno's on his side. And Nuno was, was very wasteful. But he's probably thinking, listen, I need, I need to get some oomph in this team because this ain't right. And I know many people would say, you know, it, it's, it, it, it could affect the young man. But if the manager don't try something, he's still going to get stick. So he's, he's got to try something. But we just, no matter what happened, we, we weren't at the races, so. But I don't think it, I don't think it was a personal thing. I don't, I just thought he, he wanted to get somebody on there who can try and G this team up. And it weren't happening. And, I'm, I feel I feel for Nuno. Obviously, you do because it it seems as though it's personal, but it's not. Definitely not. You know. So, Kev, it was nil nil, and mm-hmm. like you said, everybody was having an absolute stinker. Shocker. Shocker. And of course, the back pass that Leno had to chest out, and it went for a corner. He kept with him when he made the mistakes at Liverpool, and he stood by him. He picked him for the following game. I think it was um, Newcastle Mm -hmm. and stuck with him. Of course, Tierney was coming back from his injury. But even at that point, everybody was, oh, Nuno, he's the one, he's the guy, Mm -hmm. he's the man. I just don't like how, you know, some Arsenal fans accuse people of flip-flopping on Arteta. We can't flip-flop on a young player like that, Kev. He's got the talent, but they do. But they do, yeah. But, but that's but the my, culture right now, so. But my point is, is that could Arteta not have just waited 10 minutes? Were we, and I had people coming at me on Twitter saying, well, he was going to cost us the game. Everyone cost us the game. The entire squad cost us the game. Yeah, but so sometimes you have to do something to shake the team up or try to. You have to do something. Because it's like the team were in a slumber. There was no, there was no zip. There was no energy. As you said, it was like there were strangers. So if you see, if you see it happening, Sophie, do you just let it go, or do you try and shake the team and let and, and move things forward? Snap out of it. You know what I mean? Get them snapped out of it. So you make a decision that everyone's going to go bloody hell. I could be next. I could be next here. Uh, you saw that's not true. And Ketia could have come off for Lacazette a lot earlier. I would have bought Lacazette on at half time. Uh, uh, but you see, so that's why I, I say about uh, uh, eye on the semi. Because Lacazette's going to start. He, he's, the only, he's the only one we got, Sophie. Mm-hmm. He's the only one we've got. And to be fair, Tierney didn't do anything when he came on either. But he didn't do anything, so. But if ever there's someone on the bench who could be a catalyst. Yes, I agree the, with that. He's the one. 100%. That's why, if, I suppose if it was a midfielder, he might have made the move and brought Patino off. I, but Kev, what would I, that have done to him? I don't, I don't disagree with the substitution. I think I would have waited until half time. Where, you know. No, yeah, well, listen. Again, so I understand you wait till half time and all that kind of thing. But when you're on the side and you're, remember, you're expecting your team to be performing. And mm. they are not. And they are starting to get down that side. Yeah. That's I, the I, issue. I need yeah. to. I need to put 
a marker down. I've got to make sure they don't do us down that side because he's mm -hmm. starting to get exposed. Mm -hmm. And I need to bring someone on with that attitude to try and get this team bloody going. As a captain, Kev, you're going in at half time. Do you pull Nuno aside and say, listen, son, don't worry, you know, or do you, what do you do? As, as... Yeah, I, I think the manager would, would say that anyway. I think the manager and the coaching staff mm -hmm. would be in there and say, listen, I, I took Nuno off and it's no disrespect to Nuno, but I brought Kieran Tierney on to try and get you going. What's going on? We've got up it. Like I say, I th me personally, I think the manager done that to try and shake them out of their slumber. So, mm -hmm. because we were, Sophie, we could have been playing till today. <laughs> we we wouldn't have, have gone nowhere near. We wouldn't yeah. have gone nowhere near to go. So. You know, Kev, and I, I can't remember who it's happened. I'm sure the squaddies will let me know and everyone in chat, but there's been games where you've seen a sub be subbed. I can't remember if it was Mourinho. It seems like a Mourinho-esque thing to do. Well, Mourinho done it and um, Tuchel done it. Tuchel, Tuchel did it, yeah. To, to Liam, Callum hudson and Brutal. He done it to him, it, was it? It was last season. Brought him on and then took him off. Yes. Good evening, Jenny. I'm gutted too. Two seasons in a row, Kev, we've got dumped out the cup in terrible fashion. Terrible fashion, Sophie. And do you know what, Sophie? We got dumped out in the same way last season. Do you remember? We changed, yeah. the, we changed the team because we had a, a, a game quickly after. Mm-hmm. Because we played Southampton twice last season. Do you remember? We changed the team for the FA Cup game at the weekend. Got dumped out. And then we played them with our first team and, and, and dealt with them. Yeah. This is what I love about our listeners, Kev. Reminding me, I forgot. Um, the the crowd was slaughtering Abue. Yes, I agree, Newman. But the Matty Kay and Virginia and a few others have let us know um, that he did it. He, he subbed uh, Abue. And it's mm -hmm. happened, and it does happen. It's ruthless. It does happen. It's, it does happen. It's... Duncan Ferguson done it when he was I... manager at Everton with Moyes Keane. Moyes Keane. He done it. Kev, I, I don't believe this. The players don't value the FA Cup. I can they... see why fans... Feel... Maybe they were apathetic. No, they value Maybe it. Maybe they were Trust gutless. Me. They were gutless at the weekend, weren't they? It was just gutless. Yeah, it was... Listen, they... Whatever you want to say about the team, it's open season for that performance. Abject, gutless, no fight. You could roll them off your tongue, Sophie. Yeah. But Super a few Kevin. days later, we're going to expect them, some of that team, it's going to have to be ready because we're going to Anfield. We're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna get to that. We're gonna no, get to I'm, that. I'm just saying, like you know, yeah, we could yeah, yeah. Call, no, we could, call, we could call it what we're like. Can't perform like that. At Can't Anfield. perform like that at Anfield. Get slaughtered. All right, there's 300 of you in live chat. You know what to do. Vinny's out. Do a Vinny. Hit it, <laughs> nut it, chest it, or just smash it in the back of the <laughs> back of the like net, please. Yeah, you don't want Vinny and Vespa barking again. Uh, Kev, I wanted to put this one up uh, from Guna Russ. Good evening, Guna Russ. Hope you've got your tea and your biscuits. The manager's now uh, now has one job to get us in the Champions League. If he fails, that's it. It's over. Uh, Russ. What's over? He is going nowhere. I'm telling you now. I agree. He has a job to do. We've got to win a trophy. We're in the semi-final. We've got to beat Liverpool over two legs. And we got to get that top four. I agree. But let's be honest. After what he's done so far with the team, I just, I just don't see. I think Mikel Arteta's got nine lives at times. I think he has, but I don't. I, I think he's going nowhere, Russ. Virginia, we better bounce back. We better, better bounce back. Sorry, Jenny. Now, now Jenny's got to go make the team get the biscuits. <laughs> Poor Jenny. <laughs> oh, get over what, what you want been so. What do you want from Jenny? What do you want? <laughs> Bonzo, we're out of the FA Cup. That's a route back to Europe. That is one route back to Europe gone. Gone. And it's a trophy opportunity. Gone. I understand it's gone, Bonzo, but we still got to talk about it because we didn't go after the game. 
And remember, from tomorrow, we'll be talking about something else. So exactly. we deal with it today. All right, Kev. So we've done Nuno, um, we've done the midfield, and we've talked about Patino. Um, mm-hmm. I wanted to put a few things to bed here with you, so I'm going to kind of group them together. Okay. Um, so some people wanted me to ask you about Callum Chambers. Why is Cedric playing at right back and Callum isn't? Of course, we don't see what's going on in training, but Callum was definitely one of Arteta's go-to players at the beginning of the season. A lot of Arsenal fans feel like he's much more competent in that position. As you know, I have not been a fan, but even I would say that Callum Chambers could do a job at right back in fact, I would have played him at centre-back maybe and put Ben White in midfield and had Patino on the bench. I mean, it, you know, we talk about Arteta having played Jacker at left-back. Why not do that? But the other one is Enketia. I think we've seen enough of some of these players to know that it's time to move on. After the League Cup, Enketia's value, I said to you, did that go up in the marketplace? And you go, no. And you were right, Super Kev. You're absolutely right, because then the question would be, did his value go down in this game? And the answer is no. No. We we know what Eddie is. Sophie, di- Sophie, this is our problem. After the after the cup game, scores a hat trick, does really well. We know he's not the answer. We know Cedric ain't the answer. But Callum Chambers definitely isn't the answer either. No, he I agree with that wholeheartedly. <laughs> but out so, of a bad bunch. Yeah, yeah, but Sophie. It doesn't matter out that. of a bad bunch. It's because let's be honest, if Chambers plays and they perform like that, what are we gonna say? Well, we got Cedric there, we should be putting Cedric in. We can't win. They're just not good enough, Sophie. Let's just be let's just be real. They're I not could, good yeah. enough. They're not so whatever permutation you want to use, Eddie's not good enough. Cedric Chambers. We've got to invest in our squad, Soph. We need a stronger squad. Yes. And we have... We, this is where our money has should be spent. Build, yes. fattening that squad. So when we take players out, and the one coming in can perform. Yeah, Pablo Mari not getting a game either. Not getting a game. You have to quit. You have to ask yourself, my goodness. If, if you know, Cedric's getting... A game yeah. and holding yeah. Kev here. Do you know what, so Sometimes, you know, what you got to do is ask. You don't know what they're like in training. Mm-hmm. Because remember last season, Chambers was in front of Cedric. Back in the last season. Chambers was playing right back. Cedric had that mishap. Do you remember in, in the... Um, Prague game and we never really never saw him for the rest of the season virtually no it's but it's one training of, it, means a lot to this manager and if you're performing in training that's when you get the nod I find it hard to believe that Callum Chambers isn't putting the effort in training it's, no, but maybe you, Cedric's better dear God <laughs> We're in yeah, big, big so, trouble. No, no, I mean, obviously, out of that bunch. Yeah, 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 yeah. I understand. Yeah. Right. Um, moving along swiftly, because I'm I may I have a few talking points. It's top five, but you know me, there's always a couple extra. But I wanted to get to this one with you in particular because you know, we is this possible, Kev? Because we are in a pickle now, right? Jacques has had COVID, hopefully. He's going to recover by Thursday, right? Um, Again, I'm not saying Xhaka is the answer. I've been very supportive of Xhaka, and I've also ripped him to shreds lately. But he's the best of a bunch, and I'm sick and tired of us saying that as Arsenal fans, Kev. They're They're the best of a bad bunch. That's not how we should be operating as a team. So... Mm-hmm. everyone's been asking and there's a lot of comments in chat and we had a couple DMs. Would you recall Saliba if we need to? Or would you recall Genduzi if we need to? No. Genduzi's... He's out. Ne- he's finished. He's never coming back. Never. We need... Saliba... We could recall him. Of course we could. He's our player. 
But I don't think he he should be coming back because he's not going to be starting. We've got our two centre-halves. And I understand there's a drop-off to holding. But that's one we're going to have to ride out because we want Saliba to have the season out in France. Our problem is midfield, so really in the midfield. And I'll be very surprised if we don't go and get two midfielders, minimum. God, Because we need them. Kev, I think, I think it was such a mistake to let Maitland Niles go now, at least wait until the semi final of the EFL Cup is over. Knowing how are we not better prepared for this, Kev? Whether there's someone coming in or not, and you know what, I, I'll eat my words in two days if we have an announcement and we've got a midfielder who's come in, but still, like you said, it's it's one isn't enough right now, it's just not one isn't enough, so and like I say, you you want things to all work. Like clockwork, you mm -hmm. want your you want your player to come in as Maitland Niles goes out. You want that to happen, yes. Of course you do. But you know what, Sophie? Unfortunately, life doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like that. Sometimes things take a little bit longer than expected, and the opportunity for Maitland Niles. Who's to say? He says, he, he, he says I, I'm not in the right frame of mind to play. He was playing because, against Juventus yesterday. No but, that, that's, no, but what I'm saying is, for Arsenal, because he's, mm. he's set to go. So the moment you hold him back, we've seen it happen where the player's not in the right frame of mind. Because if he gets injured, that's the end of his, his move. Kev. And and I know I, I I'm just I'm looking at it from the player's point of view, so of course mm -hmm. if we kept him, he could have started yesterday. Of course he could. But I look at it from a player's point of view who's not getting game time, who wants to get out and he wants to be involved. He's going to Roma. Got a big game against Juventus. He wants to play. He's been told, come in, you're gonna be involved. He wants to do it. Andy, I beg to differ. Maitland Niles was better than anyone playing in that midfield yesterday. And I'm a Sambi fan. Sambi just needs to adapt to English football. It's a lot different to coming from. And look, he was brilliant at Anderlecht. Captain, 21 years old. He's a good player. But I don't like how we set up, like Kev said, you know, our biggest faux pas at Arsenal is not surround. When you're going to play these young players, you've got to surround them with some experience or at least players who have played regularly. And someone made a good point when I said, how is it they're not ready? We haven't played in a week. You, They said, so conditioning, just because you haven't played in a week, you, it could work both ways in, in the sense where you've sat too long. You know, you're not too sharp. Um, but it, it just feels like this was a mistake. This was a, a, a whether it's a do's mistake I get what you're saying, Kev. Injury, then the deal gets, we lose out on the deal. I, I can't remember if we're paying half his wages while he's at Roma. Someone can please let me know possibly, that. Possibly, possibly. But getting the money off the books in order to be able to bring someone in. I know everyone's getting, we're going to have plenty of time to talk about Vlavic, you guys. Mm. Today, I want to focus on the FA Cup and then what this means going and our into... our position, the... our precarious position. Yes. So, Kev, how does this... Talking point number four, how does this change things as we go into Thursday? Because we still could not have Xhaka. There's definitely no Partey. This is a game where Pepe could have come in and probably, ha you know, contributed somewhat. Not saying he would have been great, but we've seen him be able to do bits, but he's not there. Aubameyang has been missing for a while now. We can't flip flop on that. We've been a bit. Well, we can't team even. Him. We shouldn't even mention them because they're not no, there. No, they're not there. So, we're desperate, so. How do you we, approach it? How do yeah, you approach? Uh, uh, desperately, we are desperate to win. We have to be desperate. We've got to be hungrier, and we've got to be desperate, and we've got to play that way. You see Nottingham Forest against us? They were desperate. 
They were desperate to be involved in the game, desperate to match us, desperate to stop us playing, desperate to be involved. Then they go ahead and they're desperate to keep the lead. That's what we have to be. So do you do you say, do you let do you have chambers come? If you were gonna, based on what we know now, going to Liverpool, right? Mentally, there's a lot with this game now with all the crap that happened with the cancellation and they open up their training ground the day after. They play Shrewsbury at the weekend. They get through. Um, they had key players playing. Uh, Fabinho played. Van Dijk played. They had a lot of first-team players who were playing. Do you play Chambers? Do you play Chambers with Ben White? Do you put Ben White in midfield with Sambi? Do you play Lacazette's definitely going to play up front when Saka going to get a rest Kevin who's available <laughs> that's the best thing to ask how many of our first 11 is available because if our for any as much as our first 11 is available that's who plays Gabriel plays Ben White plays Tierney plays, plays Tommy everybody, Arsu plays everybody plays I think field. Tommy should be available for this game I don't think there's any reason why he wouldn't be um, Whoever's available, so for our first plays. eleven plays. Okay, 100%. now when then with the midfield, who do you play? Because let's say Xhaka isn't available, recovering from what he's recovering from. Mm -hmm. Some people think that his recovery might be slower because I don't know. I don't know why, but if he plays, is it going to be him and Sambi? If, he if plays, he's available, yeah. If he, yeah, I think it will be. I think it will be. You've got to go with. As, as many of your best players as you can in this game. We don't have anyone else in midfield, so. We don't have anyone else. Because if if, we're, if Patino struggled against Forrest... Yeah, no, he's not going to play against Liverpool. I'm, no, no, I'm just that. saying, I'm just saying. Yeah. He's the only other one we've got in midfield. Can I... Can I ask you, because I learn a lot about tactics when I'm talking to you, of course, and call me crazy. Is there a chance whereby Udegaard could play more in the centre with Xhaka and ESR can play and then you've got Martinelli, Laka and Saka? Is there is that possible against this Liverpool team when you well, look at who they might have? Well, what you can do, so what you can do is play Xhaka as the holder, the sitter, Behind Smith Rowan Udegaard. Yes, you could do that. But then there's only one protector. Kind of thing. Udegaard's not a protector. He's more of an offensive player. Keep the ball merchant. Smith Rowe's a, a, a ball player and a runner. Our issue is when we turn the ball over and there's one holder against their... They're Jets, because when they pick it up, they go. Mm -hmm. And Jack is not the best at recovery in the best of times. So we have to we have to be we have to play pretty compact. We have to be, as I say, we've got to be desperate to make sure we keep them at bay and we're a threat. We've got to be desperate, so it's important so important. So I thought that Emil Smith Rowe would be recovered by Thursday, but some of the folks in chat are telling me that it looks like he might not. We don't know yet. We do yeah, not we know, know, you guys. The right? best ability is availability. Yes. Um, Kev, would would you think my notion of playing Benjamin White in midfield is that too crazy? No, not not necessarily. It might work where you play Ben White as the holding midfielder, but you're taking a risk. You are taking a risk splitting him and Gabriel up. Mm -hmm. Because if you move him out the back, then who's going to holding's going to play? <sighs> I'd rather Ben White and Gabriel be there. Oh, yeah. What, 100 gazillion million percentiles? Maybe Chambers plays in the holding midfield. 
because we've seen him play holding midfield before. He, he had a he had a season at Fulham. Not saying that Fulham were any good, but he still had he won Player of the Season to play that, that holding the midfield. They got relegated, but he was yeah, Player of the but Season. Play, yeah. But but let's be honest. We, Ramsdale's been relegated twice, and remember what our fan base was like. But for just this game to get us through it, that's what we might need to do. So because you know what, Sophie, we're desperate. Yeah. Yeah, we are. We've made. I think we've made a rookie error. Whether it's a do, Arteta, you have to believe that you know someone. Someone moves on in a job. You got their replacement in to do a handover period, <laughs> and this is a really big mistake. And I hope it doesn't. It's a big fortnight for us, Sof. It's massive, Kev. It's a big fortnight for us. Huge. Woody, Woody Wood, I always laugh out loud when I say that. Oh, oh God. Oh. And then his quote is, I really can't get up. <laughs> I walked right into that one. Oh, that's why I'm looking at you like, what's up? Anyone for tennis? <laughs> <laughs> God, I can't even find where I was hanging it from. Oh, steady on. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, sorry. Ah, oh, Kev. Here's the truth. The truth is, I know Barry totally. I know. We've God left ourselves. Short, we? We've left. We ourselves have. Short. We have, Kev. And here's the here's the scoop, right? So we were excited about the EFL semi cup final, um, semi cup semi uh, semi final. And I think we were excited after our performance against Manchester City. The key here is not to get too despondent mm -hmm. yet. Well, take and to, to still be excited about the semi final. Of course, it's Liverpool, but Kev, if if it, we have a chance, I can. That's a, we have a chance. We have well, a good. We have a good chance. No salad. Have a good chance. We have a good chance. Two legs. We have a good chance. No Salah, no Mane. If ever you're going to try and do something, it's now. It's now. This is true. This is this is very true. I'm not sure if we have a very good chance. I think we've got. No, I said we got a, a good chance. chance. We got yeah. a good chance. If, listen, if ever you want to be playing Liverpool. If somebody said to you, you could play Liverpool without Salah and Mane or with Salah and Mane, you'll take without Salah and Mane 100 times out of 100. This is where we're at. This is where we are. I would rather if it was a one-off game. I think in these moments, I mean, I say that, but we lost the FA Cup. But with the players that hopefully come back that are going to play in the semi-final, I wish it was just a one-off, you know. I really do. So, all right, um, cup, um, send in any questions or comments. Uh, we'll do um, that with Kev at the very end because we didn't get to do the post-game show yesterday. Mr. So Waffles, if there's anything... love it. <laughs> there's always a chance. You tell them, Mr. Waffles. Oh, now you're friends with Mr. Waffles, eh? Yeah. Hey, no, yeah, but he's yeah. saying that he's being positive. There's always a chance. Of course there is. Yeah, of course. Well, you've got to believe, right? You do. I'm just I'm just saying that the excitement level has diminished just a little bit because seeing the midfield yesterday, going into that game, hope <laughs> Arsenal fans praying that Xhaka's fit. Who'd have thunk it? You know, these things do come back to haunt us. Um, okay, Kev, let's talk about um Mikel Arteta a little bit here. A lot of fans are bothered by how animated he is on the sideline and they feel like he micromanages. We've talked about this before and and some of the fans, a couple of people wrote in and they were asking and, and comparing him to AirPod Albert, who was a little calmer against City and they're saying, see, we had our best game, but we lost that game. I know we had our best game, guys, against City, but we still lost that game. Um, as a player... I think you've mentioned to me before, you don't really hear. He could yell all he wants and he could yeah, gesticulate he could all, all he wants. wants. He could yell all he wants. You're concentrating on the game. Uh, yeah. 
I think fans give it so much, so much airtime about micromanaging and watching him on the side do that. But it's amazing. When, when the manager doesn't do, isn't animated, they ever go and say that is, so you can't win. I remember, I watched him at Everton. I was pitch side. I watched him and he was constantly trying to push the team up the pitch. Then I, I speak on here and people are telling me he's the one who tells them to go deep. Sophie, you can't win. When the team win, fine. If there's the team loses, then it, it, everything gets dissected. Yeah. All right. Nice and concise on that one. That's our top five talking points. Hope you have enjoyed. Let us know what you think. You can always make your comments on YouTube. We will be reading a lot more of those out as well um, on our YouTube comment show. We've also got uh, another show coming up, which is a little bit uh, different um, with regards to the YouTube comments. Should we tell them at the end of the week, Kev? Or should we, should we, let's, let's, Probably let's you. let them, let's let them wait. Should we make them wait? I like can making you, them wait. Can do, but it, they are, they are squaddies. All right then. So uh, we're going to be, you know what? Why not, <laughs> why not have a little competition? Guess. Have a guess. Uh, guess. Yes. It's going to be a fun show, like a very quick fire, 25 half hour. And it involves comments, but you have to guess what kind of show it's going to be. All right. The Highbury Squad at gmail.com, the Highbury Squad at gmail.com. And if someone gets it right, or close, or close, we will send you a Brock the Neck mug. And just ask Lone Star how much he loves his Brock the Neck mug. Okay. All right. Brilliant stuff. So let's get some quick questions in. Kev, someone was asking about Marcus Rashford. Um, Marcus Rashford isn't coming to Arsenal, people. No chance. He's, that's not happening. Um, not happening at all. So that's that one done with. I've got another one here for you, Kev. Why don't the strikers score, Kev? <laughs> well, they're not good enough at the minute. Not been good enough. It's that simple. Not been good enough. We Five need bellies. We need a number. We need strikers, a striker. When they get the chances, they're going to take them. That's why they get the big money. And that's why they're the difference makers. That's why they cost the most money. Because they get the chances, you take them, then all of a sudden the game changes. We had zero shots on target, Kev, against Nottingham Forest. It's embarrassing. And we had we had opportunities, but we couldn't even hit the target, so... Yeah, don't give me Eddie. Jeez. He best not be starting against Liverpool. I don't care what his prowess is in that competition. Lacazette starts. Don't you give me that rubbish. Uh, question, would we have lost if Wenger was manager? Yes, I think so, says Five Bellies. Well, what was it? Uh, our last FA Cup loss to a team outside the top flight was there, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Un under Wenger. So... Listen, we don't know. This is all, this is all hypothetical stuff. But yeah, it's happened before. So, Kev, do you rate Airport Albert? I think he's a decent coach. Yeah, I do. Yeah. All right. I mean, we don't know too much. Well, we, well, we know a little bit seen, about him. He's got the seen, prowess. He's been, listen, he's been we've in seen the, game the team. Long time. We've seen the team. We've seen the team improving. So it ain't just Mikel Arteta, it's his backroom team. And do you remember, Sophie, when he won manager of the month and he took the picture with the backroom team? He was getting plenty of stick. Why is he taking a picture with the backroom team and all that kind of thing? I did, yeah. I gave him. <laughs> but but that's why, because he values them. Do you know what I mean? He values them, it's us. So yeah. it's nice, it's nice that. that yeah, a bit premature celebration that was. Uh, why didn't Saka lob their keeper, Kev? I mean, who knows? Because he didn't, he made the decision not to. Um, do you think Arsenal have a midfielder lined up to be letting Ainsley go when we need him the most? Yes, I think Kev's I answered that. I um, do. I think that I think they've got more than one lined up. Take me back. Wants you to teach our strikers how to nut the ball like a pro, Kev. Listen, I I don't know what they do in training, but 
very rarely you see us get headers, don't you? Very rarely. A lot of it's feet, 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 feet. And again, if we're going to go out and we're looking to get a striker, we've got to get a striker who can head it. Mm -hmm. Because it gives us so much more, especially when you could play feet, because you could go feet, spin, and then go for a header. But our, our strikers are small. So defenders are like, I'll just go tight as I want. Yeah, exactly. That's why I think a lot of fans are excited about Vlavic as well. Kev, he's versatile. He's good in the air. He's good with his feet. Mm. You know, has a good turn. I mean, he's very Hold talented. He's young. Holds the ball up. Yeah, absolutely. He's only Hopefully his attitude will be um, as good as the player's attitude that we have in most of them in the squad right now. Pap says, tell Sophie we need some good news today. Well, um, not pregnant. Uh, let's see what else could be good news. Good news is we're here. We're breathing. We're alive. We're kicking. We're living. We're, we're living. We're, We've got listen, a roof over our head. I, I tell you, health is the most important thing out of anything. We're here to discuss all this. And if any of you has ever been ill, really ill, it's hard, man. Being ill is hard. Yes, it is. So you've got your health. We can come on here. We can agree. We can disagree. We could tell our opinions and all that kind of thing. It's just like a family. And then when we finish, you go and do whatever you're, you're doing with your immediate families and stuff like that. But we're living. Do you know what? There's a lot of people who would swap places with us, Gooners. I tell you. Many teams out there that would swap with us. So, you know, we, we, we take it for what it is. Well said, Kev. I think in a time that we're living in especially, um, we value that more above and beyond anything else. Good health, a roof over the head, food on the table. Um, sun is shining. Nice. Oh, that makes me, you know, who you think of immediately when you hear sun is shining. Play the tune. Um, Wes Bird is on crutches at the moment, but still happy and feeling lucky with what um, I have, I in, have my in my life. Nice uh, one, Wes Bird. Nice one. Yep. Yeah, God bless all of you as well. We love it. We love, um, you know, yeah. we love each and every one of you. And if, it's if fun. you've got your parents as well, if you've got your parents, let me tell you this if you've got your parents, Tell them you love them. Trust me. Tell them you love them. Because you know what? Sometimes you just go through life and you they're there, aren't they? They're there. Yeah. Tell them you love them. Love them so Kev, much. You sometimes, my spirit animal, like I, I called my dad at the weekend and we were on the phone for an hour and 15 minutes. And I was talking to him about uh, not many people. Need Sorry, kids, I hope I didn't get you. So when my, my dad first moved to London in the 50s, he was a waiter. And he used to work at the Les Ambassador Club in London. Nice, nice. Mayfair. Yes. I know and it. I know it. Yeah. <laughs> Kev, he met everybody there. Oh, oh that know. place was, still is. Yeah, it's still there. And... You know, here's this young Greek boy from Cyprus going and he's got, he's serving Anthony Quinn and Tony Curtis and Elizabeth Taylor and Richard Burton. He said that Anthony Quinn and Tony Curtis were the best tippers. And when Tony Curtis was in London, my dad was, was like, he bought in a chick, a different chick every night when he was there. Um, and Playboys, isn't it? Playboys. Yeah. Yeah. And a couple of times he got to work the cloakroom and he, and he said when he worked the cloakroom, his tips were like amazing. The the actor who played Robin Hood back in the day, English actor, he said he gave him five pounds in 1956, Kev. Wow, 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 wow. Yeah. And so I was like capturing these stories and writing it all down. He's told me so many times, but, you know, it's just amazing that you say that because we you had... You learn something so much. Yeah. From your parents and yes, you're yes. not family, older members of your family. Exactly. Richard you know, so, Green. Yes. Yeah. So if you get a chance, people, I'm telling you, squad, if you get a chance, five, ten minutes, sit down with your parents and sit down and ask them about when they were young. I tell you, you'd be surprised at some of the stories that that they tell you. Really yeah. would. What's up with Johnny Boy? I missed it. 
what happened, Johnny boy? I missed it, but oh, listen. Oh, told mum I loved her today. Oh, we buried my old man last week. Oh, sorry Johnny. To sorry to wear that, Johnny boy. So sorry, sorry to, to hear that. that. God Real bless sorry. you and your mum. And ask, ask yeah. your mum about your dad. Some of the stuff about your dad, because there's stuff that, uh, she'll tell you about your dad that you didn't know and make you proud, mate. Yeah, exactly. I'm not. I look depressed. Do I look depressed today, Kev? Thought my Russian hat. I got my oh. Adidas. My Adidas swimming gear on. You got your Von Dutch I... on. Yeah, got no my Von Dutch. No, no depression. <laughs> no depression. Maybe Arsenal try to try to creep in a little bit, but hey, Sophie, do you know what else as well? I think us playing in the white, it's a great gesture and all that. So Yeah. But can we we got that it's it hopefully it's over now, right? That's it. Hopefully. I I hope. I mean, look. Because I think the kits are going to get donated, aren't they, and stuff yes. like that. So, yeah, we need our colours back. Yeah. Listen, um, yeah, it's nice to get soppy sometimes, Lone Star. Look, it's Monday, it's a new week. We want we always check in and make sure everyone's all right out there because everyone knows that we're here. If they want to talk, you can always reach out to us. The Highbury Squad is here. We're a family and all that jazz. And I yeah, love to Johnny Sophie, Boy and everyone. Sophie, and I'm just, I'm, no, I Sophie, don't know if I should I'm say anything about the white because it was for, no, it was no, for a so, good call. No, so. no, so I'm saying it was a great call, Sophie, but just the one game. Thank you very much. That's it. Done. Sophie. It, so yeah. I've got to tell you this. There I am. I'm, I'm going to a meeting in Manchester today. Mm -hmm. I'm walking on, I'm walking, I'm, I'm going to this cafe. And all I hear is somebody, Super Kev. And I'm thinking, who's that? So some guy randomly comes running over in middle of Manchester, said, listen, I listen to the hybrid squad all the time. And, um, you know, you guy, you and Sophie are unbelievable. Da, 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 da. You're right in the middle of Manchester. We took a couple of pictures with him and stuff like that. And then uh, he went his way, I went mine. Yeah, that's in Manchester. So we are getting out there, Sophie. The word is getting about this is the place to be, so. Kev, I think that person came into the chat and said thank you for the pics today, Kev. Well, there you and go. And I put it up on I put it up on the screen a couple of times. If you're still in the chat, say hi. But send yeah, send the picture I, in. I, I send the picture to hybrid squad at gmail.com and we'll put it up. Um oh, lovely, Virginia says I lad. wish I was that guy. He was a such a lovely lad as well, so. <clears throat> He was a so, social. Kev, I, I can't believe it. Kev, he says, I, I, I watch the show all the time, which was lovely to hear. Yes. Look at, this is why you guys are so brilliant. He did. His name was Bullion. Well done, Utebi. Uh, yeah, Bullion, Bullion. Yeah, I saw that name come up. Yeah. Yeah. So, again, if he's in the chat or he listens to it, maybe he's had to get off or whatever. But if he's in the chat, yes. send the picture in and we'll put it up. What a lovely send lad he was. Yes. And you know, guys, while we get a little, you know, when Kev mentions what he does, we get a lot of people that write to us who, you know, you guys keep us company the same way we do you. We get a lot of letters from people from all around the world. Mm -hmm. And this is why it's good to be grateful for being part of a community and having people that you can talk to. You have no idea sometimes the letters that we get and some of them are personal. We don't read them out. But Thank you to everybody that writes in and keep them coming. And we're always here to lend out ear. And Bullion, if you're listening, the hybrid squad at gmail.com, send your picture. Uh, Sophie, got to say yes, this sir. as well. Got something else to add a little <laughs> bit of spice to it. So there I am. <laughs> I'm at a go to Stoke yesterday to watch. My son was on the bench. They he changed scored. The team. He scored, but to change the team. Right, his grandson's playing. Unbelievable. Incy's son's playing. And then my son gets on. It's crazy. Do you know what I thought when I was watching <laughs> the game, Kev? honestly. I was like, how old are we getting? Oh, no. Sophie, don't. I, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Sophie, but I love, I love progress. I love to see these youngsters coming through. Mm-hmm. It means so much. It means so much to Wrighty. It means so much to Sean. It means so much to Paul and his missus and the families. And it means so much to me and my family. That, that, the boys are doing well. It's great. I love it's brilliant. it. It's brilliant. I can't believe that Ian Wright's grandson's playing. And you know what? 
by the way, they're all a spit. That Paul in Tom Ince is the spitting image of Paul. <laughs> Tyrese looks just like you, and Righty's grandson has got a little Righty look, in look him of him, yeah, for sure. I tell you what, it'd be great to do a show with all three of them. We'll make that happen one day, maybe, you guys. We might just oh make that God. happen. Jeez. But it is amazing to see, it is. You must, you you know, must be... I, I think to myself, so if there I am and I'm there and I'm thinking, wow. You know, we played against each other and they played with each other, etc. But there's our, like, our lineage there playing on the pitch together. That must it's, be incredible. It's, it's crazy. In the FA Cup. It's crazy for the same team. It's for the same team. It's crazy. It really Brilliant. is. Brilliant, Brilliant stuff. Brilliant. Absolutely stuff. amazing. Love it. Absolutely. It is. What a feeling. It is amazing, you guys. Like that's uh and that's I'm, I'm excited. Like, you know, DiMaggio, who's Sean's boy, starts the game. And I'm buzzing for him. Mm -hmm. I'm like, wow, that's brilliant. My son's on the bench. DiMaggio, go do your thing. I love it. Yeah, League <laughs> Legends Kids FC. It's unbelievable. It really these, is. These, these, do you know what? And these I kids, wonder if need, that's these ever... kids deserve. These kids deserve some credit, you know. So, because having the name of your dad, oh yeah, is sometimes the hardest thing of all. Listen, we see we see that all the time. Like, um, the the name that springs to mind, of course, Cheers, is Cruyff. Ross. Is Croft is a Croft's a Croft son, Jordy, Jordy. Yeah. yeah, you know. And I wonder when was has that ever happened before, where you've got the grandson and the two sons of three legendary players on I, the same I team on the same team. <laughs> oh God, I That's... don't know. News to me, but wow. Yeah, it's Maybe amazing. DiMaggio, I tell you, he's a really good player. Really good. He plays like his old man. And and then Kev, there was, how old is he? Is he 17 or? 18, I think. Just 18, turned 18, yeah. 17, 18. They bought a 16-year-old on too, if I and remember. Listen, and he is a player as well. Turkish boy. Mm. He's a real, nice. he's a real talent. Apparently, that blue mob are, 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 are hanging around Stoke, looking at him all the time. Chelsea. Don't let that happen. Well, <sighs> you know, they're well, after anybody who's, anybody who's half good, they'll take what they <laughs> I love it when we get a little spontaneous in that. And um, well done for bringing it up, Kev, because I was watching the game and I was like, wow. And Incy, he scored. Incy's son scored and Ty And scored. your son scored when Ty came on yeah. um, to make it 2-0. Uh, and against yeah. one of my old teams, Leighton Orient. I know. You know who I've got they such love a lovely... They I love... I've got such a great feeling. A couple of them text me, message me today and stuff. I've done podcasts with them. You know, that I've got such a great affection for that football club. So they really helped me, obviously, when I was younger, helped me there. But they, you know, sent me such lovely texts. It's great to see, you know, your, your son come on and put it away like his dad. And, uh, you know, if he ever needs a loan, tell him you could come to your Orient and stuff. <laughs> you, you have time for everyone, Kev. That's what we love about you. We're so lucky. Soak it up, bottle it, put it on the top shelf. We get or this. stick it on your waffles. <laughs> stick it on your on waffles. Your waffles. <laughs> uh, Lucas, sorry, sorry, to, to, sorry to hear. Sorry to hear that. Sorry. Oh, sorry to hear about your dad. And well done. You're a good son there, telling Dealing him you loved with, him every yeah. day before he passed. No, yeah, damn right, damn right. yeah. We're all, we're all here for you guys. We it's are hard. so here for you. And case he Casey's the one who said to put your Christmas art up if you want to know Newman. Thank you. So you see, Newman thinks I'm against him. I'm no. not. No, sometimes I am. <laughs> see, I'm not. I'm not against your art, but you can't do it all the time, Newman. No, but I'm the one who asked for it. Thanks, Tammy. Thank you, yes, darling. exactly. Right. Listen, we're going to leave you there. Um, there's 360 of you in live chat this fine Monday. It's been an absolutely brilliant Monday madness. A little bit of mellow Monday, a little bit of Monday madness. Um, it's been fun as usual having Super Kev with us uh, telling these stories as well. You fine folks in chat have been on your best form. You all 
get a standing ovation this evening. Player ratings, 9 out of 10 for the squaddies and the chat this evening, Super Kev. Very good. Excellent. We will be back tomorrow night. Uh, we've got some great shows lined up for you this week. Don't forget, guess the uh, show, the new show, the hybrid squad at gmail.com. It is a comment show, but what type of comment show is it? Whoever guesses correctly wins a mug. And if you don't guess correctly, I'll keep the mug. All right. Newman gives his play ratings. Vinny gets a nine. Soph gets a six. And Casey gets a seven. I'm not sure that you've ever beaten me, Kev, in the Newman ratings. Uh, of course, uh, uh, Sophie. I still haven't beaten you in the Newman rating because that's minus <laughs> seven. <laughs> right, it's over to Super Kev. We'll see you tomorrow night. Same time, same place, people. Super Listen, Kev. Everyone, thanks for joining us. You know how much we really do appreciate you. Boys, girls, ladies, gentlemen, dogs, animals. <laughs> it's all right. Always remember as well, squaddies. Tell the people you love, you love them. Do not take it for granted. So, squaddies, I salute you. And you take it easy wherever you are in the world. And you know the good thing? Aston Villa have just equalised. At ease, everybody. Totally screwed up the screen. <laughs> I don't know what's happening. Here we go. Mind the gap between the train and the platform. Please stand clear of the discussion doors. The next stop is Highbury Squad.